my foot so wet. Surely there was a better way. Now, bear with me, this is a new microphone. I uh, really don't know what I'm doing. Hello, 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 hello. Good? Right, you filming? <laughs> oh my God, oh are we gonna get stuck? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh my God, oh my God. Keep going. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit, oh shit. Diddly dee 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 Right, here we are. I'm in the Peak District. We're on a desolate moor. Been looking forward to coming here for months and months and months. This is a place that I've been reading about. You can see it behind me. Karl Wark. It's largely a mystery to archeologists. Very interesting place. Is it Neolithic? Is it Iron Age? Is it Bronze Age? Is it early medieval? We don't know, we simply don't know. It could be all of the above. What we do know is people lived here for thousands of years. They took to this naturally occurring hill uh, and they added to the natural defenses of the place. Be entirely military. It could have been ritualistic. We simply don't know. People have built on top of the naturally occurring defenses there and they've lived up there for a long time. And we don't actually know exactly who lived up there. It's Iron Age, it's Bronze Age, it's Neolithic. Now, you probably won't realise this because it just looks like a normal, normal shot that most YouTubers are very good at pulling off, but it's taken me a long time to be able to actually pull off this sort of shot. I've been talking into my phone microphone for a long time without any sort of actual decent audio equipment. Finally got myself a nice little wireless microphone and who knows? It seems like it's working. So there's people all around and it's, it's a lovely day, a lovely day in the countryside. Lovely day to see a hill fort. When Heyman Rook came to Karl Wark in 1785, traipsing across barren mud and windswept moor, the fires of industry already burned bright in the Midlands. Colossal iron wrought constructions and steam power heralding the birth of a new age to come. Revolutionary flame then burning all over the globe, along with the dazzling latest technologies. Those last few decades of the 18th century stood on the very precipice of the old world and the new. Even here, in the relatively remote wilds of the Peak District, much of the nearby hillside had already been levelled off in an early example of civil engineering, which would ultimately come to define the coming industrial age, utterly transforming the heartlands of England. But Rook's interests lay in a much older time. very much of the romantic persuasion, often opposed to the incessant march of change. He harked back to the ancient days of yore, evoked by such places as Karl Wark and nearby Higger Tor. Now being investigated by modern people for the first time, For he was an antiquarian.
In that year, Heyman Rook gives us the earliest written descriptions of that great rocky bulwark on Hathersage Moor. Naming it as Care's Work. As far as he was concerned, living in an age of empire, increasingly obsessed with the first verifiably British occupants of the island. It was a foregone conclusion that this place had been built and manned by the Celts. Those ancient folk who modern Britons could place on a pedestal as their revered ancestors. Thus laying claim not just to England, but to the whole island, and Ireland beyond. As far as Heyman Rook was concerned, an ex-soldier turned self-made antiquarian, those mysterious Iron Age peoples must have been responsible. Even going on to discuss their sacred institutions and ritualistic observances. For this, in his view, had been a haven for druids. According to him, the place even containing a court of justice, where legal verdicts were handed out and strict holy laws adhered to. Unfortunately, like most research concerning the Celts, Rook had no real evidence for his claims. And by the latter half of the century, his ideas were dismissed almost entirely by one of the next investigators of the site. For Isaac Chalky Gould, writing in the latter half of the century, the prehistoric inhabitants of Hathersage Moor were of a much more transitory nature, coming and going with the ebb of the seasons. Using the rocky outcrop as a temporary refuge or camp to tend their animals when the time came. Much more in line with the ideas of modern archaeologists, Gould's Karl Wark was based on the evidence and nothing more. Unfortunately, like many of our ancient sites, there simply isn't much evidence to go on. Though we can always use our imaginations to conjure up fires of the annual Beltane Festival burning on the horizon, signalling the start of the movement from winter to summer pastures. And yet, even the name of the place was in flux during that time. A book in 1802 on the beauties of England and Wales refers to it as Care's Chair, suggesting some sort of link to the Welsh word for fort or rampart. But by the middle of the century, Carl's Wark would be set in stone, recorded as such by the famed barrow digger, Thomas Bateman. Flagrantly dismissing the work of historians like John Gardner Wilkinson, who argued the place to indeed bear the hallmarks of an Iron Age British hill fort. For Bateman, Carl's Wark was a British encampment set up to defend against the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great during the civil strife of the 4th century AD. The 
though often given to flights of fancy, Bateman's prolific career took him to all corners of Britain. His beaker cups still line the displays and stock rooms of museums all over the land. And bizarrely, he may have been closer to the truth than his critics realised. For in the 1950s, when the place finally underwent a small-scale investigation by archaeologists, led by Frank Gerald Simpson, the age of the site was up for debate once more. Upon examining the evidence dug from the monumental gateway, Cecily Margaret Piggott, the same Piggott from the recent film The Dig, concluded it had been built not during the Iron Age, but during the early Middle Ages, nearly a thousand years later. Possibly in the 5th or 6th centuries AD, mostly due to similarities of construction with sites in parts of Scotland. Today, though most researchers tend to err on the side of caution, remaining with an Iron Age date, a handful still ponder a construction by the Romano-Britons in the wake of the collapse of the Western Roman Empire. In 1953, Norman Price even fancifully described it as the defensive fort of the Arthurian knight, Sir Lamorak, who he associates with Luark, a figure from Welsh oral tradition. Like Cadbury Castle and many others, making his home atop the remnants of the Iron Age past. Finally, by the 21st century, an even older past is often stressed. The more recent assessments arguing for use in the Neolithic. As much as 5,000 years ago. All things considered, Karl Wark is in dire need of a re-evaluation, or even a full-scale archaeological dig. Unfortunately, it lies mostly forgotten today. Let's get to the top. In the wild wood of Padley Gorge, it's easy to see monsters and myths. The old folklore of England round every tree and mossy bank. Once, long ago, forests like this covered the whole island. The whole of Europe, in fact. The place oozes atmosphere. Of fairy magic and forgotten groves. Heading across the peaks earlier that day, we pulled into Grindleford Station, a similarly magical sounding place and a gentle stroll through the woods ensues. I half expect to see the renowned ethereologist Erwin Saunders going about his business.
Eventually, when we get to the top of the gorge, we see immediately what we're here for. Rising like a ship over the desolate moor. Except it isn't really that desolate. It's a beautiful, clear, sunny day. Near perfect conditions. But the marsh is still there. Oh yes, boggy, wet ground all the way. Finally, we get to the fort. And what a sight it is. I can see why people think that these places have spiritual connections. Amidst high moorland and girt stone bluffs, this is a landscape that has never been tamed. It isn't difficult to imagine wizened old druids worshipping idols here. Going about their diabolical rituals. Perhaps even making sacrifices on the cold slabs. Setting about diabolical schemes. And it isn't just Celtic paganism that's been caught up in the orbit here. When Sheffield historian and folklorist S.O. Addy studied the place in 1893, he surmised the name to be Old Norse in origin. meaning old man's fort, referring to the devil. As far as he was concerned, when incoming Scandinavians settled the region in the 9th and 10th centuries AD, they treated the place with fearful reverence and awe. Like many locations all over the newly conquered lands, incorporating it seamlessly into their already ancient worldview. The place is old. You can feel that immediately when you arrive. Layer upon layer of history. Deep geological time. coupled with prehistoric foundations and the often fantastical, much later explanations placed upon it. At the south end of the ramparts, the remains of some kind of a shelter jut out from the stones. Likely built at some later date from rocks originally used as defences, and at the base of the cliff on the eastern edge of the promontory, evidence of 16th or 17th century millstone quarrying can be seen. But when you get to the very top, past the immense entranceway, is when it gets really special. There's a mysterious feel to the place, otherworldly, all of a sudden, though obscured from view on the plains below, the holy mountain of Mam Tor can be seen rising to the southwest. The significance of such a view is lost today. But perhaps, long ago, this was some kind of a sacred landscape.
It's an imposing place for sure. One of the most unusual hill forts I've ever seen. Naturally defensible, even without the immensely impressive man-made walls. But coated in massive rocks and stones across its entire length. It still seems part of nature. The glacial deep time of this part of the country. In reality, besides all the suppositions of generations of scholars, today, still next to nothing is concretely known of Karl Wark. Not even its age. For the most part, it remains entirely unexcavated. Only future digs will reveal what secrets were left here by the ancients so long ago.